Hey guys, my name is Jeff. Welcome to my channel. What I'm looking to do with this is to inform pilots who are either interested in the military or looking to accelerate their careers with information, um, guidance, tidbits, tips and tricks uh, in the avi aviation industry that can help you along the way. So what I'd like to do is provide like a chronological order of how things kind of went for me so that you have something kind of to relate it to. Um, there's so many different ways to go about uh, becoming a pilot, getting to a major airline. And I think it would help if you just have kind of a background story, some personality that you can understand and relate to. So I'm going to use my own story, how I went through the aviation process uh, to get to where I am today. So to start, uh, I'm currently in the Air Force Reserve. I'm flying the C-17. Uh, I'm also a first officer at Alaska Airlines. And so how did I get to that point? Well, we'll re rewind uh, and start kind of from the beginning. Let's start uh, freshman year in college. So in my freshman year, I was a scholarship athlete at Oregon State University. I played college football. I was a defensive end. And I played for four years. I started for three of them. We went to four bowl games. Um, we won them all. And I had uh, awesome teams, won a lot of games, and it was a lot of fun. But football wasn't my only passion. While I was going to college, I got uh, introduced to the Oregon State Flying Club. And they were not associated with the university in any way. So I wasn't going to like a University of North Dakota type school to where you would get a degree in association with your pilot's licenses. It wasn't like that. It was just the flying club. And because it was part of the university, we got a discount. So after I knew that Oregon State had a flying club, I went out there, introduced myself, got started with some lessons. And throughout college, um, I did my private, my instrument, and my commercial rating, all while I was uh, being a collegiate athlete, having to balance school, um, tests, practices, games, traveling, all that. So. People say, well, I don't have enough time to be a pilot. Well, you know, that could be true and everybody's situation is different. However, I had a full plate, a full scholarship, um, practices and everything else to compete with my time, but I still um, made flying a priority because it's something that I wanted to do. After I graduated, I was part of the 2008 NFL draft where I was selected by the Cleveland Browns as a free agent. I uh, spent f a glorious four days in the NFL, and then they said, uh, thanks but no thanks, uh, which is the business. However, when one door closes, another one opens. So I was given the opportunity to play arena football, and I did that for two years. I was part of the Spokane Shock. And uh, we went to the championship game both years that I played, and we won the second year, so my final year. Um, and I don't want to say that that was kind of like the end point, but I decided to retire from football at that point uh, and focus solely on flying. So after uh, that season was over, I went and did an accelerated course where I did my uh, CFI, my I, MEI, all in about four weeks. And that was prior to Christmas of 2009. And so I came out of all that. Uh, great Christmas present. I was a flight instructor. Uh, both single engine, multi engine, and was well on my way to um, building the hours that I needed to become a regional pilot. So we fast forward a little bit. I got my first job at Spokane Airways. I was a flight instructor. Life was good. However, flight instructing in the Pacific Northwest is tough because the uh, clouds, the student load isn't very big. Um, it was at the international airport, which was good, but there were competing flight schools. Um, the, you know, the, like I said, the clouds, the freezing level in the winter is really low, and so it just made it difficult uh, to fly. So uh, even though I was getting those hours that I wanted, I wasn't building as quickly as I wanted and pro progressing as, uh, as fast as I had thought being a flight instructor would be. So at this point in time, I start to kind of explore my options. What are some other ways that I can build time, whether that's doing pipeline work on the side or uh, aerial photography, a couple of my friends did that. Um, and one thing that was introduced to me a little while ago uh, when I was a sophomore in college was the military. 
And I had previous experience with the military. My dad was active duty for 22 years. He flew B-52s. He did the whole thing. Um, but the opportunity that was presented to me was with the Air National Guard. And if you guys don't know about active duty versus the Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve, it's the best kept secret in the world. Um, with active duty, they control you. And with the Guard and the Reserve, you have much more control over your life. And we'll get into all those uh, steps later on. Um, but yeah, so like I was presented with, uh, hey, why don't you apply to the Portland unit um, to fly the F-15? I was like, that sounds great. But at the time in college, um, it just wasn't the right time. I was with a long time girlfriend, now my wife, um, and she had her own career and the military just wasn't gonna fit into that. So uh, back in college, it just it didn't quite work out the way that I wanted it to. And in fact, as kind of a fact-finding mission, I went to the ROTC recruiter at Oregon State and presented myself, uh, I was going into my junior year and I wanted to get some more information about the military. And so I say, I set up a meeting, I talked to the recruiter, laid it all out, hey, I play football, but I'd really like to fly, I wanna compete for a pilot slot uh, and go active duty. Uh, and the recruiter flat out told me no. They said that I was uh, too late in the program and the pilot slots are too competitive to get, you won't get one. And weirdly enough said that football players don't do well in our program. I don't know why that was the thing, but all those things are false. I go to pilot training years later and find out that people uh, were in ROTC for two years only and were able to compete for a pilot slot. So um, why that recruiter led me astray, I don't know. However, it all worked out for the best. Uh, and you'll see as the, uh, the story unfolds. So we're back at it. We're uh, in Spokane trying to find a new career path. Uh, flight instructor is just a little too slow. I'm trying to get to the regionals. Uh, like everybody else, the rat race, some of the chirpings of uh, the pilot shortage is starting to uh, you know, come out in the news. Uh, so I really wanna be at the forefront of all that. So uh, again, the military presented itself and this time it was the right place, right time. So. Uh, I had a mentor of mine who was uh, kind enough to give me a call and let me know of another opportunity to join the Air Force again, uh, Portland F-15s. And so with a uh, long discussion with my wife, we decided to apply and I was uh, hired and was sent to UPT as F-15 um, Air National Guard pilot candidate. So that's kind of a brief summary of kind of my situation, my story, how I got into flying, why I got into flying. Um, so I was originally, like most of you, going through the flight instructor route. I was gonna join a regional, put in my time, uh, and then eventually get the hours and, and then go to a major. Uh, but there's, you know, there was an alternate route out there, like the, the military, when you say military, everybody thinks active duty. You know, oh, I'm gonna be moving every three years and um, long periods of training. You gotta do 20 years and then you retire and then you're 45 years old and now you have the opportunity to join the airlines. That's totally not true. With the Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve, you have the same 10-year pilot commitment. After pilot training, you incur a 10-year commitment. Uh, that's your payment for going through pilot training. Um, everybody has that, active duty, guard, reserve, everybody has that. However, the difference is after you graduate and you go through all your specific training, at the end of training, the guard and the reserve go part-time. And now that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Now, if you have a backup, you're, you've got another job on the outside, maybe you're a firefighter or something, paramedic, and you kind of just fly on, the, fly on the side, that's okay, you know. Um, you've got a backup, but uh, some people want to be airline pilots, but you don't have that backup. so. Um, there are full-time opportunities in the Guard and the Reserve to do a desk job and then fly on the side. Uh, however, uh, for myself, because I had those civilian flight hours before uh, going into pilot training, I had about a thousand hours and then the military time on top of it and then all of my training. Uh, and I flew the C-17, so I'm flying all over the world, building hours quickly. I was able to bypass the regionals altogether 
and go straight to a major airline within a year of finishing all of my training uh, with the military. So um, those are the opportunities that I'm talking about. In addition to you know, the acceleration of your aviation career, the Guard and the Reserve offer uh, aircraft specific and uh, location specific uh, qualities. So there's Guard and Reserve units all over the country. You just need to pick which aircraft you want to fly or and or where you want to live. And so, for example, the F-15s were in Portland. My wife lived in Oregon. Her whole family was there. I wanted to fly fighters. Everything fit there. So that was a, a unit that I was going to apply to. Um, there are multiple F-15 units, for example, all over the country. Um, so what you want to do is if you want to fly C-17s out of Mississippi, there's a guard unit in Jackson. So... Uh, you have to go on to their respective websites, which will be in the show notes down below, and you can begin to do your own research about what options, opportunities are available, and then you can start whittling it down um, and start focusing on the locations and or aircraft that you want to um, fly or where you want to live. All right, so that's like a, a, a short kind of synopsis of my story and how I got from college to the military, how the military got me to my major. There's tons more details. We'll get into that. Um, but what I want to do with this channel is provide uh, excellent content and feedback to any and all of your questions. Um, I'm, I'm going to do it, try to do it in like a chronological order of beginning to end. I know nothing. I have nothing, I don't have my private pilot's license all the way through, uh, so what do I need to do to become a pilot in the military? What do I need to do to become um, a competitive candidate for one of these guard and reserve slots that are pretty pretty highly coveted um, to the ones that know about it? A lot of people don't know about it and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to educate uh, the aviation community out there about this opportunity that's available. Um, I did write a book called Alternate Route it uh, explains, uh, it's the ultimate guide to becoming a pilot in the Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve. Uh, it talks about my story. It's a step-by-step -step process about how to get these coveted slots. Um, I suggest you pick up a copy and uh, follow me along on this channel. Uh, I ask that you subscribe and the link to the Amazon listing will be down below. Uh, I look forward to speaking with you guys. Always give me comments about uh, content you want to hear and or see, and uh, look forward to the journey.